Hello, welcome again. So, another nice little case here for a Friday morning. And, you know, if I'm being really honest with myself, um, I'm not entirely proud of this case. Um, now, what I'm not saying is this case went really, really badly. I think the um, the, the end result um, was, was perfectly fine. Um, but as we get into the case, you'll realize that um, the, the, the sort of removal of dentin in, in one of the certain canals um, was probably a bit, bit excessive. But, you know, um, this is all about learning this channel and this is um, a great demonstration of really a, a strong argument to, to be taking cone beam CT scans in, in highly calcified teeth. Um, you'll see that eventually I did take a CBCT, but probably, if I'm honest with myself, a little bit uh, later than I should have. So let's get into the case anyway. So this is a case of a very, very highly sclerosed um, lower left six. You can see by the uh, the X-ray here that there's no obvious canal space on the on the radiograph. So um, I've created a uh, um, I've removed the old filling, put a new composite filling in, and I'm just using a high energy um, ultrasonic tip here just to um, sort of clean out most of the, uh, the the canal floor and in here it looks like as if the the canal orifice is pretty obvious you know I had the the, the sort of drop um, in the the two sort of canal orifices that you can see here but the, uh, the 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 hand file that I'm using here just isn't quite dropping nicely into um, this uh, like a, like an obvious canal. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to use some um, low, low energy ultrasonic. So these are tips um, you, uh, called uh, endo success tips, and they're just used on a, a dedicated endodontic unit. And again, you know, it's, it, it looks like it's obvious here, um, but I suppose um, looking back on this, maybe it was the endodontic tips that were causing this sort of uh, faux kind of access. So to kind of try and negotiate these canals here, what I'm trying to do is I am using a definder and in um, and in succession, we're using the definders and we're using these sort of needle tip, ultrasonic tips, just to have a little kind of look around and just to see if we can feel a nice drop into the, the canal space here. And um, again, we're gonna use the high energy, the amount of times I've used a high energy ultrasonic and it just drops into the canal. And these end of success tips are really, really good because they're, they've got loads and loads of different um, ends on them. So the first one we used was kind of like a torpedo shape and then we used a, like a needle tip. And this one's like a ball ended ultrasonic tip. And this kind of works in the same way you'd use a gates Glidenberg, you say, but you've got much more um, uh, control over it. Again, quick succession of ultrasonic tips, uh, high energy, and then we're going to use a D-finder here. The D-finder has got a tiny little bend at the end, and this is a magical tip. I've, if you've seen lots of my videos before, you know I like to make a little bend at the end, and we finally just catch uh, the, 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 the canal orifice here. And then I'm going to use very, very, very careful shaping of um, this glide path file. Now, some people would like to uh, use a hand file, probably into the apical third before we're reaching for this um, sort of glide path file. But I'm quite confident this is a strong file. I'm not pushing it too hard and I'm just letting the file sort of um, flow towards the apex. OK, so if I'm getting any resistance at all, I'm pulling out and I'm irrigating and then I'm using um, like, a you know, a, a sort of hand file to to ensure uh, patency of the canal that we've got so far. And then again, I seem to be using these RF openers all the time. Um, my my videos that I put up as I I tend to get this RF open out a lot. But I'll be honest with you, I don't really tend to use the RF openers too much. I just think in this case, um, you know, it is highly sclerosed and it just opens up the canal space. So now we're moving on to the mesobuchal uh, canal. I haven't shaped the uh, the the mesolingual because I, I I just wanted to get paid to see in all the canals first and I am just using this needle tipped um, ultrasonic tip along with the bull ended just to kind of find this um, 
just trying to find this kind of uh, kind of orifice opening. You'll see I'm using paper points there as well, just to um, remove some of the the, the, the wetness from uh, the canal area or sort of this sort of divot that I've created. And I suppose what I'm looking at here is I'm just dividing the, the tooth in in half. And um, I don't know if you've seen a paper by Krasner and Rankow. This uh, talks about how there's symmetry within the, the canal floor. And if you're ever having trouble finding uh, canal orifices, it's really, really important paper to look at because um, I suppose if you look at the um, this is sort of triangle we've we've created here, you can see that um, the triangle is like an equilateral triangle, isn't it? So it's so it's all kind of symmetrical, and uh, we know where the mesolingual uh, canal is. So it then sort of follows that you can sort of look in the same kind of direction of um, of of where the the triangle sort of meets. And, and this kind of circle here sort of shows where we should be looking. And actually, um, I was kind of erring on the side of let's look a bit more measly in this canal because I thought the the, the two uh, canals join. So um, sometimes when you take a lot of um, uh, uh, denting away, what happens is that because of the curve of the canal, the, 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 the orifice, as you remove it, moves sort of more measly. And we'll 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 see here that that it wasn't the case, but that was my thinking at the time. And that's my sort of rationale for for how much uh, denting that I've kind of removed there. So I've tried my best to uh, to 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 have a little look, and I'm using this ball ended burr again. I'm 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 really really thinking to myself now. I I am um, removing a significant amount of denting measly. Um, to, to this uh, mesial uh, buccal canal and I'm seriously, seriously concerned about perforating this tooth. So it's at this point where I'm thinking to myself, well, uh, a CBCT image needs to be taken. And if we look at the CBCT image here, we can see that the depth that I have uh, I've, I've created here with my ultrasonic tips is kind of at the point of where the, uh, the, the, the canal is, but I am actually um, too mesial. So the great thing about these CBCT um, images is that you can have a look at uh, where the canal is and you can kind of orientate yourself to see where you are. I know there's a, there's a big thing at the moment about CBCT images and um, they don't really work well for sclerosed canals. You know, I, I can see there's an argument in that, but also I can see that um, in this case, perfectly, it's orientated my my, um, my, my my instruments. Another great thing about this is it kills a few birds with one stone because I am due to do a, um, a root canal on the tooth behind it. I know it's very poor prognosis. And so, so, so I've got a perfect um, sort of map there for that tooth. And also um, you can see here in the sort of the, the distal aspects of the tooth, when I've sort of very, very slowly looked for the distal canal, you can see I'm a million miles off. And obviously if I'd kept on looking in that direction, a perforation uh, would have been, um, you know, would have been certain. So you can see here that I've placed a, a temporary filling on the on the tooth. So I've obviously taken the, the rubber dam off and I've just put a bit of PTFE and a BGI and I've just removed that. And now I know uh, this is the arrow. This is kind of direction where I want to have a little look to see where this uh, canal orifice is. And again, it's just about careful, careful removal of dentin um, using those ultrasonic tips. Those You obviously can't use the ultrasonic tip um, on your on your uh, chair unit uh, for this kind of careful sort of uh, denting removal. You've got to have a, um, a, um, a dedicated unit. And eventually we find the orifice, which is the best feeling in the world. And um, we're just going to again use this, uh, this Hyflex 1503 or 4, I can't remember, just to open up this, this canal space. And it's really, really tough to see this because this is a really, really deep kind of um, a portion of the tooth here. And again, 
the great thing I like about these um, these high flex glide path files is they just want to drag uh, you down into the canal. You don't have to push them, and if and if you feel like you're not um, progressing like you you should be, you just pull it out and then you just recapitulate. So we're now going to find the distal canal. Again, we've used a CBCT image to, to we, we know that I need to be much more distal than I was looking before. And I'm just using a, a fast hand piece here just to remove the, the sort of gross tooth uh, tissue and filling. But I know that I'm not gonna use the, uh, high, uh, the, the fast hand piece to look for the, uh, the, 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 the distal canal. And um, again, it's just kind of the same uh, kind of um, uh, protocol. We're going to use the Endo Success um, dedicated endodontic ultrasonic tips to, to remove dentin. And we're going to use the high energy. And, and in this case, the high energy ultrasonic has dropped into the, the, the distal canal. And, you know, it's, it's, it's bound to because the distal canal is so large. And again, you can see that nice little pinprick exposure there of the uh, of the canal orifice, and then we're just going to use the same protocol, the 1504. It's a 1504, just to very very gently open up the uh, the canal orifice. And um, yeah, back to the uh, coronal fairing with the orifice opener. You know, I, I suppose in this case I probably wouldn't have used uh, open up the orifice opener just specifically for this uh this this canal but um because it was already open we uh we we just used it just just freeze and then we're going to just use um you know the same protocol we use for everything here we uh, for the working length termination we're going to use a, a a k file um and um and try and find the working length and then i'm going to finally shape this tooth um uh 0.5 millimeters away from the zero reading that we found on the on the apex locator distal canals all boxed off and now we're going to attempt to find the working length of the mesial lingual and again i've put like a tiny little bend at the end and i just can't quite get to the end here um the the the, the apex locator isn't um giving me a nice zero reading so what i'm going to do here if you can't get all the way to the end of a root canal what you want to do is check to see how far you've got and then you want to just shape um the canal space minus one millimeters for as far as we get because um you, you, if you're again if you're a fat habit of watching all my videos you know that the the usually the reason why the file can't get to length is because gripping further up and then you make a nice little bend at the end here and then uh, finally we get to the to the working length and i'm actually using a um an, an eight a size eight d finder here with a little bend at the end and when they got a nice zero reading so obviously if we've used an eight we just need to uh sort of open up the canal space with a 10 and then once we've got a 10 um at the uh, zero reading or all the way to the end of the the, the roost we're going to use uh this um this glide path file and then um, finish it up with a size 25 again some people might say 25 is too large in this case but to be honest I'm just getting to the point now where um, these small small preps are really really difficult to manage I think and then we're going to prepare for the comb fit radiograph um, again I like to uh, make sure we get tugged back and I like to snip off um, some of the GP points here because I don't like the the excess GP points kind of um, flapping around when we take the comfort radiograph because I feel like sometimes the um, when you fold the uh, rubber dam over it can cause problems and you can see we're probably a little bit too far away um, from the radiographic apex here with the distal canal and that is a concern um, so in this case, what we always do is we always recheck the working length. So that's the first thing I'm going to do here. I'm going to remove the cones, get a, a hand file down the distal canal and just check for sure that we are at the working length. Um, and we are at the working length. And I suspect in this case that the, um, the, 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 the there's, there's probably a 
a tight 90 degree bend in the distal canal, which is really, really common. And I'm, what I'm doing is I'm using a, a size 10 K file to ensure we've got patency from that sort of uh, tight, acute bend. And you can't see here, but I'm using a watch winding kind of slash watch winding slash in and out motion just to make sure that that uh, distal canal is patent. And um, we're on the home straight now. So we're gonna use um, ultrasonic activation with, um, we're gonna use this uh, 18th Ultra X uh, unit uh, to activate the irrigants. And then we are going to dry the canals uh, with our paper points. Um, unfortunately, the high flex paper points aren't great. So we're using uh, wave one gold paper points here. And then we're gonna use uh, uh, this biostromic sealer, one fill with um, these visco tips. I know that the distal canal is massive. So I'm gonna put probably a little bit more uh, uh, bioceramic in the distal canal than I would do say with the mesolingual or mesobuccal uh, canals. And um, unusually in this case, I'm not removing uh, the excess um, uh, GP points like I would. Usually I like to um, do each canal and then get that boxed off and then um, you know uh, move on to the next canal. But again, it, with everything, it's kind of how you're feeling on the day, isn't it? Um, what you've got to be careful with um, using high flex cones and bioceramics is taper lock, meaning that you can fill the canal too uh, much with the bioceramic sealer. And then when you push the GP to length, it kind of bobs up and down because the, the, the sealer has nowhere for it to escape. Um, the work around that is to use narrower tapered GP points, but that's just something I'm not really keen on at the moment. Um, and yeah, just using this uh, heated plugger just to remove the excess. And again, say it once, say it a thousand times. Once you remove the excess, um, don't be too shy at pushing the GP down to length because um, if, if you don't push really, really hard on the GP, you're gonna take a cone fit radiograph uh, sorry, a post-op radiograph, and you're going to see voids, especially in the distal canal. So just don't be shy here. I'm doing a, using a Mach 2 plug here just to really, really condense um, the GP right really to length. And if you've um, correctly apically gauged this tooth, then you'll be fine. And you can see here um, the, the post-op. You can see here that there is a quite a tight 90 degree bend in the distal canal and the use of a bioceramic has helped that all flow all nicely and um yeah looks looks super nice and as ever if you like these videos please um subscribe and also like all my videos of course and um, if you have any criticisms or any questions, let's spark a debate in the comment section below and I will see you in the next video. Okay, bye-bye.